What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go through a quick review of multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Just like you had a test the next day, let's go ahead and highlight the most important things you need to know, as well as work through a couple examples, so therefore you have a good understanding of how to approach different types of problems. Now, the first thing that I want you to understand when we are multiplying rational expressions is just remember how we multiply fractions. Right? Now, remember, we're not doing any cross multiplication. When you're multiplying fractions, you always multiply directly across. Now, these numbers aren't crazy, right? You can easily multiply two times nine and three times 10. However, the way that we want to approach multiplying is always look to see, can we go ahead and simplify this first before we start applying um, big numbers? Because again, what if this was like a 12 and a 19 and a 13 and a 100? Like, it would just get really, really big, right? So one thing I recognize is 10, I can rewrite as five times two. Nine, I can rewrite as three times three. So if I was to rewrite this product, everything all together, because this is technically two times three times three, I can rewrite this as two times three times three, all over three times five times two. This is important because remember the division property tells us whenever we have the same number, term, or expression in the numerator and the denominator separated by multiplication, they're going to go ahead and divide to one. So these twos divide out, these threes are gonna divide out, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm just left with a three fifths. So always look to be able to simplify first. Now, obviously we're doing rational expressions. We're not gonna be dealing with numbers and variables. We're gonna be dealing with expressions that we're gonna to have to factor. That's how we're gonna simplify. And that's where a lot of students get tricked up. The next thing that I want you to remember is just when we are dividing fractions. So a lot of times we're gonna use this division symbol and two thirds divided by a nine tenths. Now in this case, we can't go ahead and simplify because this operation dividing is going to be a little bit different than the multiplication. However, just a simple thing to remember, I don't like the keep change flip, but remember whenever you are dividing fractions, that is the same operation as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we could say two thirds multiplied by a 10 over nine. Now in this case, I can't simplify anything out. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and multiply straight across. That's going to be a 20 over a 27. Now, if you are a little bit confused on this, let me just kind of go through this one more reason, the reason why we keep change flip. So if I have two thirds divided by a nine tenths, just remember ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to divide by a fraction, right? We want to divide by one because anything divided by one is just going to be itself. So to get rid of this fraction in the denominator, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. But whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do in the numerator to keep what we call equivalent fractions. Any fraction multiplied by a reciprocal is going to equal to what? One. And then you can see here in this operation, we have exactly what we went simplified over here. So therefore that's a 20 over 27. Now again, that's just your quick review. Now let's actually get into some examples of multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Okay, so in this first example, we have some expressions. And obviously, ladies and gentlemen, what I always tell my students to do before we look into applying the operations or do anything else, let's just factor every numerator, every denominator. Let's see if we can factor out the GCF, we can factor a binomial, the trinomial, whatever we have using our factoring techniques. So in the first one, I can't really do anything with, so I'm gonna leave that exactly as we have it. Here, you recognize that the two X and the four have a common factor of two. So I'm gonna go and factor that out. When doing that, I'm gonna get a two X times X minus two as my marker runs out. So we'll go ahead and switch it. Hopefully this one has a little bit more juice, which it does. Um, over here, I see like, well, six goes into 60 10 times, and then that's gonna be a remainder of 36. Six goes into 36, so that'd be six times, so that's gonna be 16. So I can factor out a six. That's gonna leave me with an X squared minus 16, which I do know that is also going to be a difference of two squares. I can factor that down into an X minus four times a, I don't know how I wrote that, x plus four, okay? So I have to do some double factoring over there. And then over here, I have an x squared minus three times an x squared plus three. Now again, you can rewrite this all as one expression like I did with my example over here. But again, since these expressions are separated by multiplication, I can actually go ahead and apply the division property across the side over here. Now the only thing that I'm seeing that is actually going to be dividing out is going to be this x minus three and this x minus three. But it's really, really important for us to remember when we are writing our final solution, or our final expression, we always have to include all the values that are not going to be defined, okay? And so the values that are not gonna be defined are the values that are gonna make your denominator equal to zero. Even though this x minus three still got divided out, per the original expression, we can't have as an included value. So. A lot of times I'll even do this once I get this into the simplified version before start dividing out, because I wanna see what are the values where x cannot equal. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that right here. X cannot equal, well we know two, because if you plug two in for here, two minus two is zero, the whole thing is going to be zero. So x cannot equal two, three, x cannot equal three, because three minus three is zero. 
So we have three and then also negative three. So now let's go and rewrite our simplified expression. So what we have is the x minus threes divided out. So I'm just left with in my numerator, remember there's that six here. So, oh, and also don't forget this, you can still divide out your numbers, right? Two divides into six three times. So in the numerator, I can rewrite that as a three. So in this case, I'll have a three times an x minus four times an x plus four. And then in my denominator, I'm just going to have a x minus two times a x plus three. And then I also have to make sure I include our undefined values. So two, three, and negative three. Now, the nice thing about multiplying and dividing or even simplifying rational expressions, I don't expect my students to be able to multiply this back out. I rewrite it in the factored form and you are good to go. All right, let's go ahead and do another multiplication problem. And again, this one, I just, I had to do some trinomas, right? Because this is where students really make mistakes in this chapter of rational expressions is just the factoring, the amount of factoring you have to do. Look, we have one, two, three, four factoring problems. And that's why it's so important to have those basic skills of factoring really kind of down pat. So I am going to work through that rather quickly. I'll talk my way through it, but also to save a little space, I'll write just the factor form above it, and then we'll rewrite it down below so we know what's going to divide out. So in this case, what two numbers multiply Multiply to give me negative four, add to give me a positive three. That's gonna be an x plus four times a x minus one. Over here, I can factor out a two x. By factoring out a common term of two x, I'm gonna be left with a x plus four. Over here, I recognize this is a perfect square trinomial. What two numbers multiply to give me four, add to give me a positive two. That's gonna be an x plus two quantity squared. But since I'm dividing things out, I usually like to just rewrite it in the expanded form of this case. So therefore we kind of have some accounting of how many terms are being divided out. And then over here, what two numbers multiply give me a positive three, but add give me a negative four. So therefore that's gonna be an x minus three times a x minus one. And actually, you know what? I'm actually going to lie. I'm actually gonna save myself a little bit of space here. And I'm just gonna cross those out and look at this from over here and hopefully that's okay with you. Because again, everything is separated by multiplication in the numerator. All these terms are separated by uh, multiplication in the denominator. And so therefore we can just look for terms that are going to be the same that we can go ahead and divide out. So one thing I recognize here is my x minus twos are going to divide out. It looks like that is going to be it. I don't think I have anything else. X plus two. Oh, that's an x plus two. Mr. McLogan, come on now. Right, factor out that two, that's going to be an x plus two, and I have no more x plus fours. So yeah, one of these x minus x plus twos will go ahead and divide out. So therefore, I'll have a final answer of a two x times x plus four divided by a x plus two times a x minus three. Now again, remember, we have to include the not, or we have to add the non-included values for x. So again, I always like to go back to my original equation because I don't care if something got divided out or not. If it makes your denominator equal to zero, it's not included. So let's go back actually and look at all the values that made our original expression zero. So we have x cannot equal negative two because that would make that denominator zero, everything's zero. That could happen again, right? So it's a little multiplicity here, adding double. We can't have a positive three because that would make that zero. And we cannot have a positive one. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, simplified, not included values. All right, so now we gotta get into a division one. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to factor everything up in the numerator. Now this one's very, very important because I mentioned it in the previous two examples. The last example though, I didn't really do it, but for division, it's critically important because we need to check for excluded values in two different times. One is going to be from our original equation, and then the second one is going to be on any simplified front. And this is the exact same thing we'll do with you know, complex fractions as well, just in case there's any changes to our non-included solutions. So the first thing we need to go do, guys, is it obviously factoring? Sometimes we need to factor out multiple times. Now in this one, we see that I can factor out a positive, or factor out an eight, as well as an x. So if I factor out a eight x, that is going to leave me with a two x and minus one right, two x minus one, that looks pretty good. Over here, I can factor out a five. So by factoring out a five, or a five x, I apologize, that's going to leave me with a four x minus one. Over here, first thing I can do is factor out an x, that's gonna be an x squared minus seven x plus 12. And now what I wanna do is determine, well, what two numbers multiply to give me a 12, and then are going to add to give me a negative four. So I'm thinking x minus four and x minus three. So I can factor that one more time into an x minus four times a x minus three. And then over here, 15 x cubed, I can't really do anything with that, okay? So let's go ahead and identify all the values that are not going to be defined. I know that x cannot equal, what are the numbers that make this zero? Well, we have zero, four, 
and positive three, right? Because if you plug those numbers in for x, it's gonna make your denominator equal to zero. And then over for this denominator, we're now going to have zero as well. So that's not going to work. All right, so now let's go and rewrite this in our factored form. So we have a, actually I'll go back to my green. So my factored form up here is going to be an 8x times a 2x minus one. And over here, this is going to be an x times x minus four times a x minus three. And again, remember dividing a fraction, the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's going to be a 15 x cubed divided by a, why didn't I simplify that before? And well, so we have a 5x times a 4x minus one. Whew. Okay, so why can we divide anything out? I don't know why. Maybe I wrote down the problem wrong. It doesn't seem like there's anything really juicy for me to be able to take out. A five and a four. I mean, it'd be nice if those would be divide out, but it doesn't look like anything can really divide here. So in this case, I can divide these two. I can divide these two. So that's gonna turn to a squared. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, 16x, I did that right. Factor out a four. Uh, we can maybe change that to a four. So then maybe a four X would divide out. Why don't we do that? Why don't I just change the problem on the fly just so we have one more thing that will divide out. You're probably like, Mr. McLogan, that's not allowed. Well, as you're, when you're the teacher, sometimes you want to change things up a little bit. So if I factored out a four X, then this is now going to leave me a four X minus one. So this would be a four X. And then this would be a four X. Ha 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 ha. Double check. Yeah, that works. The reason why I want to do that is because, yeah, I want a little bit more things to divide out. So these fours, the four X minus ones are going to divide out. And then you can also see five goes into a 15 three times. Wow, that one's bad. Put you back in there. So that's going to become a three. All right, now again though, we need to look at what has been added. So we have a couple new values. These values are the same, but over here, you now have this undefined value, this four X minus one, that is in your denominator. So we need to include that as a positive one fourth, because you put in a positive one fourth, that's gonna equal a one. So we need to include that as our non-included values. Now, as I multiply straight across, I am going to get a 12, that is times a x squared. And in my denominator over here, I'm just gonna have the product of x minus four times a x minus three. All right, so let's get into the last division one. And again, this one sometimes gets confusing with students because they don't see this as a rational expression, right? Well, again, here's the cool thing, guys. Just put over one, and voila, now it's a rational expression. So again, we're going to multiply by our reciprocal, but again, we want to factor everything out first, identify our non-included values, and then we can go ahead and apply the product. So over here, I have another factoring. What two numbers multiply to give me 15, add to give me negative eight. I'm thinking x minus five times an x minus three. Over here, I can factor out the x. That's gonna be leave with an x plus four. Over here, I'm looking at this and saying, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 20, add to give me a negative one. So I am thinking here, this is x minus five times an x plus a four. All right, so let's go and take a look at our um, excluded values. So we know x cannot equal zero, because that's gonna make that denominator zero. And we know x cannot equal a negative four, because that's gonna make that denominator equal zero. All right, now we have our factored form. Let's go ahead and rewrite it as a product. Okay, so again, all we're simply doing to rewrite a division as a product, you reciprocate and you reciprocate and you rewrite it as multiplication. So now we're just looking for the terms that are exactly the same in our numerator and in our denominator. And you can see that the only thing I can divide out here is going to be my x minus five. However, X minus five is in my denominator though, so I need to include that as one of my excluded values. So therefore I know X cannot equal five, but we still have negative four, which is accounted for, as well as our X. So uh, simplifying this answer, X minus three times one is going to be an X minus three, and that's gonna be left over from X times a X plus four. Now again, there's two X plus four, so that's gonna be a quantity squared. And I think in the last example, I forgot to do this, but always rewrite your excluded values here at the end right, because that's important. Here is your final answer, and here's going to be our excluded values. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have some good foundation for multiplying and dividing rational expressions. It's now time to get into adding and subtracting rational expressions. That video is coming up next.